Hi, it's the hybrid drummer here with a new drum lesson about drum and bass music. Drum and bass is known for its fast tempo, its heavy bass lines and very punchy drum beats. One of the reasons why I love this style is because the drums have an extremely important role here. Every hit has significance. In this video, I'm gonna teach you the most commonly played drum and bass beats and variations of those, and after, I'm gonna show you some more complex grooves too. Playing these grooves in the correct tempo, which can be anywhere between 150 and 220 beats per minute, requires certain technical skills, so I'd like to give you some exercises which can help you develop speed and endurance. I'm gonna talk about different concepts for achieving the drum sound you can hear in drum and bass music. I'd like to mention a very important thing here. In playing drum and bass or any kind of electronic music live, sound is equally important to your technical skills like coordination, speed or precise timing. Without the proper sound, these beats won't sound the way you hear them in a song. They can sound fine on an acoustic kit as well, but if you want to be authentic, you'll need to modify the original sound of your drums or use triggers or play them on an electronic kit. I will talk more about sound later. Ok, let's start with the groove that probably everybody plays when asked to play drum and bass. It sounds like this. On the hi-hat you only need to play straight 8th notes. The snare is on 2 and 4. You have two bass drum hits. The first is on one and the second is on the end of three. After this you need to add some ghost notes. Just play alternating 16th notes between the hi-hat and the snare drum starting on the end of 2. Now add the bass drum pattern. This is the most common drum and bass groove. Try speeding it up to around 180 beats per minute. Make sure you play the hi-hat part without accents. You can choose to play the notes with the tip of your stick on the surface of the cymbal or with the shoulder of your stick on the edge of your cymbal. But try to avoid accenting on quarter notes. If you are confident with this groove, try some basic kick drum variations. First, add an extra bass drum right after the first hit, so on the end of one. Let's try another variation. Add the bass drum note on the end of two. Now play the bass drum on the end of four. For more movement, add 16th note bass drum patterns. Double the 8th note on the end of 3.
You can combine 8th notes and 16th notes to make busier beats. Add an extra 8th note on the end of one to the previous groove. You can spice things up with some extra 16th notes on the hi-hat. Let's go back to our basic pattern and add 4 16th notes on beat 1. Play these as right left right left and play the back beat on the snare with your right hand. Another variation could be only two 16th notes at the end of the measure. Play these two hi-hat notes as right-left. Now let's combine these patterns. Play 4 alternating 16th notes on beat 1 and 2 16ths on the end of 4. These beats that we looked at so far are still pretty simple. To create more interesting grooves, producers started to chop up basic drum beats and reorganize the drum hits. You can find a lot of videos online about the history of jungle and drum and bass music and the legendary Amen break where this concept is explained. I put a few links in the description. But on the drums it would go something like this. Now let me break down a few more advanced grooves for you. In the first example, I'm displacing the snare in our basic groove from beat 4 to the end of 4, so it's one eighth note later. In the next one, the snare is displaced from beat 4 to the end of 3, so it's one eighth note earlier. The second bass drum hit is moved to the end of 2, and I'm playing 16th note ghost notes at the end of the measure. I'm adding some more ghost notes to the next one and displacing the snare from beat 4 to the end of 4. If you play all the snare hits with your left hand, you might find some difficulties in playing the accented snare on beat 2. To develop this technique, it's a good idea to practice double stroke rolls with accents on the second note of the double. If the tempo is too fast, you can bring down your right hand from the hi-hat to play the backbeat on the snare. I will show you both versions. In the next example, I'm repeating a phrase of three eighth notes four times, starting on the end of two. To emphasize the importance of sound, let me show you something. I'm gonna play the same groove, but use different kick and snare samples and different cymbals. Just by changing the overall drum sound, you can create significantly different beats.
My method for creating authentic sound is the hybrid drumming concept. I use triggers and drum pads. But you can achieve quite relevant sound without triggers too. For example, put a splash symbol on your snare. or turn your snare upside down. Or put a drum head upside down on the top of your snare. When creating drum and bass beats, producers use a big amount of compression on their drums, so that way the kick and the snare kind of hold down the other sounds, so you often don't hear the cymbals, which is similar to linear drumming, where no two drums hit at the same time. You can create great drum and bass grooves with the linear concept, and it's also helpful in faster tempos, so you don't have to play constant 8th or 16th notes on your cymbals. Let me show you a few beats like that. The first one is our basic beat in a linear way, so not playing the hi-hat when the bass drum or the snare drum is played. The next one is a two-bar phrase. The last one is also a two-bar groove, with repeating a phrase of three eighth notes, similarly to one of the previous beats, but in a linear style. To get even more exciting beats, it's a good idea to use multiple snare drums. Right now I have two acoustic snares here, but I added some snare samples to my SPDSX, so I can play a lot of snare sounds. Check this out, 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 check this out. One thing I really like to do is incorporate non-drum sounds with my SPDSX so I can create even more electronic texture. I collected some more drum and bass grooves for you in a PDF file. You can download it from my Patreon page. You can also get some of my sound samples there. I put the link in the description. Thank you for watching this tutorial. If you liked it, subscribe to my channel, because I have more lessons on different electronic music genres, and you can watch me playing them too. See you next time. Bye.